There's an old Chinese story about a Naga goddess, Nu Kwa. She created the first people out of clay. On the other side of the Pacific, Native Americans said that coyote created the mountains and the rivers and made the fish therein. Of course, in the Middle East, the fabled creator was the Jewish volcano god known as Jehovah, though there were a few other even older creator gods too. Believers never wonder what these gods were doing before there was a world to do things in, or where they came from, even though they all apparently came from the land of pure imagination. Initially, the religious position was that the earth was a flat disk divided into four quadrants, erected on pillars or columns like a map spread out on a table, and that it was covered by a giant crystal dome with windows in it because these primitive people thought that space was full of water and that these windows are where the rain came from. It was a common belief across Asia with different religions positing that whichever god might cover the dome of the sky, stretching out the heavens over the firmament like a tent, and sometimes with the stars sewn into the fabric of the veil of night. But in the Jewish tradition, the stars were contained within the expanse of this dome, along with the sun and the moon and all the other planets, which of course were all much, much smaller than the earth and even smaller than the moon. They didn't know that the earth was just another planet and they didn't know that the sun was one of the stars. They thought that the stars were tiny little things that had thinking minds and personalities because that's the way the Bible describes them. Not kidding. And this wasn't just in ancient times either. I've actually met people like this. There's an awful lot of people today who still believe in this model or another similar one without a firmament where the sun and the moon and all the other planets are still smaller than the earth and orbit around it. They also believe that the earth is the first thing in the universe, the biggest thing in the universe, and of course the center of the universe. And even if they don't hold to such an extreme view, it is alarming how many religious people don't believe in outer space but do believe that the earth is flat. And there are dedicated religious apologists who accept that the world is round but still believe that the sun orbits the earth. There are also some who accept that the earth orbits the sun but think that our solar system is the center of the universe and that everything literally revolves around us. Then we discovered the Big Bang. Astronomers saw that other galaxies were moving away from us fast enough to be redshifted in spectroscopy, such that it appears that the universe is expanding or inflating. If you extrapolate backwards, then everything was closer together in the past, culminating in, or rather originating in, a single point where everything, and I mean everything, flew apart from there. Matter, energy, universal forces, natural laws, and even empty space and time began at that point. So anyone asking about the state of the universe before it existed or what happened before the beginning of time obviously doesn't understand the question they're asking. It's like trying to travel to a point south of the South Pole. Religious extremists delight in saying that scientists have proven that the universe had a beginning and they use that argument against the Big Bang, but the Big Bang is our proof that the universe had a beginning. Cosmologists, cosmogonists, and astrophysicists tried to work out what was happening and they produced a model in which everything in the universe rapidly erupted from a small, hot, dense state roughly 13.7 billion years ago. This discovery was initially ridiculed as a Big Bang, but the pejorative name calling stuck and that's what we call it now. Understand that a goal without a deadline is just a dream or a prophecy. So any proposed explanation has to have two things. It has to meet certain predictions that should only happen if we're on the right track, and there has to be some way to prove it wrong if we're not. And no one's ever found any data to contradict the Big Bang. So they worked out that if this hypothesis is correct, there should be a particular type of cosmic microwave background radiation to indicate that, and such was actually discovered to exist. It was a Nobel Prize winning discovery in the 1970s and it implies that the universe really is expanding and apparently has been since the literal beginning of time. Now, there's some talk of a singularity being a favorite component of that explanation, but physicists aren't really entirely certain about that. What they tell me is that they don't know anything prior to 10 to the negative 43rd seconds after the Big Bang, if in fact that is a fair description of what that is. But they say they actually know everything after that in spectacular detail. So we have only a very small window of the tiniest fraction of a second in which to speculate. Where did it all come from? There are many fallacious appeals to ridicule of what we actually know. One of them being that scientists are supposed to think that complex order including life was somehow created by an explosion. But no scientist believes that. Besides, the Big Bang wasn't really an explosion in the same sense that nuclear fusion isn't really the same thing as a fire, and it happened 9 billion years before the accretion of the Earth, so it couldn't have anything to do with the beginning of life, either. Another creationist distortion is that the Big Bang is somehow part of evolution and that evolution requires something coming from nothing. By evolution, they mean all scientific explanations that contradict their favorite fables, so 
nearly every field of science. But again, we didn't come from nothing, and no scientist believes that we ever came from absolutely nothing. The Big Bang is not something from nothing. Even when cosmologists talk about a universe from essentially nothing, they don't mean an absolute philosophical nothing. In fact, they don't think that an absolute nothing is even possible because every time they try to create a perfect vacuum, they notice quantum fluctuations of subatomic particles popping in and out of existence where there shouldn't be anything. Otherwise, logically, we can't get something from nothing, right? So something must be eternal without a beginning, and it could be the matter and energy of this universe. Because we know from the theory of relativity that gravity bends the fabric of space-time, and extreme gravity punches a hole in it. That's what black holes were thought to be. So imagine we have all the gravity of the entire cosmos compressed into a single point. That could cause a rift in the time-space continuum. And maybe that could happen from either side of the boundaries of this universe, which means that all the matter and energy, which are interchangeable one from the other, could have entered this universe from a source of the multiverse, such that myriad universes could be popping in and out of existence like bubbles in the bottom of a saucepan coming to boil, and we'd never know about these other ones because we're trapped within this one. There's no reason why the multiverse shouldn't be eternal, but in a sense, this universe could be also, at least the energetic matter in it, because another property of excessive gravity is that it slows down time. So again, if you had the combined gravity of all the matter in the universe compressed into a singularity, if you will, it would slow time down to a stop. So imagine an asymptote on a Cartesian coordinate system, which slows down time as you move backward through time toward the Big Bang, such that one second stretches out to equal infinity when t equals zero. That would mean that although the expansion of the universe had a beginning, the material energy within it is eternal. It was literally always here. It could also be that our universe changes states, that the one we're in where entropy increases was preceded by an earlier version where entropy decreases and where energy is cumulative, where everything came together instead of flying apart until it reached a pinnacle where it reversed the physical laws to begin this alternate subsequent universe where everything slows down and gets colder instead. But even if we were to imagine that the matter of energetic material energy had to come from somewhere beyond the universe outside of space and time, then remember that time is a fourth dimension, but it's only a temporal dimension. It could be that the Big Bang represents a fourth spatial dimension moving into and thus inflating three-dimensional space the same way a three-dimensional object appears to appear out of nothing when trying to move through a two-dimensional plane. It would look to us like something coming from nothing, even though it really came from somewhere else before. And what could be the catalyst for all this, the first mover that the wanna believers want to imagine? Well, it could be the random motions of supercosmic membranes or who knows what else. Why is the interior of our universe shaped like this? There is no indication that any intelligent agent even could have been involved in any of this. And remember that the sacred fables don't have a lot of credibility. Being absolutely wrong about absolutely everything they claim that can be tested. So I would say that any of these other ideas are at least equally valid to the religious idea, except that we know that a god isn't possible at all. And the important thing is that this is all just speculation, including God. If there is no way to test any hypothesis to show which one has more or less credence than another, and if there's no way to eliminate which ones are completely wrong, then it wouldn't matter what explanations we come up with. Even if you're right, if there's no way to show that, to know that with no evidence to back it and no way to verify or falsify it, then it's effectively meaningless and doesn't warrant serious consideration. So where did everything come from? No one knows, certainly not you and you've no reason to pretend that you do, or to pretend that you know someone who does, because you don't. I've read your holy books, and they reveal that your God doesn't know it either. He doesn't even know where the sun came from, or what it is, or what the moon is. Everything the Bible says about the earth in relation to the rest of the cosmos is laughably, embarrassingly wrong, and has been known to be wrong for thousands of years. The more we know, the more it shows that God doesn't know any more than the ignorant, primitive, superstitious savages pretending to speak for him back in the Bronze Age when everyone thought the world was flat and no one yet knew anything that was actually true. So anytime believers hear that you can't explain the origin of life, the universe, and everything, they think that it means that it must have been this dog or snake girl or, more commonly, some dream of genie, when in fact all these ideas are equally absurd and none of them even could be the right answer. Whatever the reality is, it is surely far more abstruse and complicated than these creatures of the id. Gods and magic are the simplest and most infantile excuses men have ever invented to explain things they obviously didn't and still don't even want to understand.